So let's say you have a series of you have a series of spirit realms, right? Let's say from the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so forth, right? Now, obviously, the people in the first sphere are in a much lower condition of love than the people in the second sphere. So, if you get influence from the second sphere, it's not going to be quite as bad as the influence that you're getting from the first sphere, and so forth as you progress. Right? The sixth sphere spirits will just influence you and in not being on the divine path. The fifth sphere spirits might have a few emotions that are connected with that. The first fear spirits will be full of anger, rage, murderous feelings and all those kind of things and they'll influence you along those lines. So it just depends on which spirit you're connecting with, which depends upon your own soul condition, because it's your own soul condition that determines the attraction. So your own soul condition will determine the attraction to that spirit and if that spirit happens to be in the second sphere because your soul is about that condition, then you'll be influenced by them. If they're on the natural love path, you'll be interested. You'll be influenced along the natural love path on that <coughs> on that place. Or if on the, they're on the divine love path, you'll be influenced on the divine love path in that place. Does that make sense? So it just depends on this. The, is in, this is in the level on that, not the earth plane. The earth plane's in the first sphere. Yeah, but to get the earth plane, what about inter interference between each of those levels themselves? Totally. Every, one, every single plane, if you're in a higher plane of any place, you can go to a lower plane of any place. So if I'm in the second sphere, I can influence the first sphere spirit. So let's say I'm in the second sphere and I believe in reincarnation. I can influence whole hordes of first sphere spirits to believe in reincarnation, just by my influence. Right? Let's say I'm in the second sphere and I don't believe in reincarnation. I can influence whole groups of spirits. Let's say I believe in that I'm a Christian. Um, let's say I, when I was on earth I was of the Catholic faith and I've now progressed to the second sphere. I will probably influence whole groups of spirits in the first sphere about the Catholic faith. I wonder about moving through the levels. Would you be allowed to interfere with other people on higher levels? You can't. But bear in mind that it's different on the earth. Yeah, I realise I'm not on about the earth. But I'm in the spirit world, no. The truth is that a person in the third sphere cannot influence a person in the fifth sphere unless the person in the fifth sphere visits the person in the third sphere. Because the third person in the third sphere cannot visit the third person in the fifth sphere. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. So the influence is always top down. It's always coming from top down. What's the best way to get spirits in the higher spheres, like the eighth and above spheres, to uh, positively uh, assist us in our journey? Well, that's obviously all about the divine path from there on. So, so practically, though, what do we do? Do we, do we ask? Uh, we, we ask, or do certainly. we certainly? But but you can ask all you like, and if you have an emotion you want to hold on to inside of yourself, is that going to help? No, you see, you can see how I have to be totally open to my own emotional processing work. If I want to ask for a spirit in the seventh, in the eighth sphere to help me, then I'm going to need to be totally open to whatever help I'm getting, and I'm going to have to be totally humble about that. And that's where most of us fall down, right? Because we're not always humble, are we? You know, somebody comes and tells us something. What do we usually do with that about ourselves? You know, we usually want to get, point the other four fingers back <laughs> and then say, what, how dare you come to me when you've got all that? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. If we've been to other spheres, how do we know whether the bent spheres are a part of the natural love realm or the divine love realm? They're all the same spheres. There's no difference. Uh, remember for those of you who haven't heard this information much before, these are, the natural love path is through this spheres, but the divine love path also goes through the spheres. Mm -hmm. But the natural love path finishes it at the sixth sphere, and the divine love path is infinite. Does that make sense? So there are natural love spirits and divine love spirits in the third sphere. And there are natural love spirits and divine love spirits in the second sphere. They're in each sphere, progressing, but they're progressing in different ways. And what I'm trying to introduce you to is the way that progress is forever, not the way that's limited to the sixth sphere. Hey, Dad, you said that, that your, your, your personal guide and guardian is assigned by God, so presumably that 
is, is the best help you can possibly receive given your soul condition, but you can actually draw in other. Given your soul condition and your will. And your will. Does everyone understand that? No. no. Right. Okay. See, if my will is that I want to progress on the natural love path, and I don't want to do emotional work, and I don't want to connect to God, yeah. what's my will? My will is... I am going to attract now, God will assign to me a person who is in harmony with my will. Why? Because you've got free will. Because you've got free will and who gave you it? God. Right. Does that make sense? Right. So, so what will happen is that God will assign, if you like, a spirit who best suits your current emotional condition but also is in harmony with your will, is in harmony with your desire. So if my desire was, I wanted to grow in the Catholic faith, yeah. who will I be assigned? I'll be assigned a guy who's higher than me in the spirit world, like in the sense of condition, but who is also of the Catholic faith. Yes. Most, most of the time. Does that make sense to people? Yeah. That's how it works. That's how what God assigns to you people who will look after you as to how you want to be looked after. Even if what you want to be looked after happens to be in disharmony with other laws of God, well, that's fine to God. Remember, He gave you that will to decide that. 